I think I got scammed and it almost killed me. The listing said, private cabin retreat, not another soul around for miles. I guess technically it wasn't wrong. Yes, there were plenty of red flags, but this was my first vacation by myself, so I thought I was just being overly paranoid. The drive up was quiet and uneventful, but I got there much later than I'd hoped. It was nearly dusk as I pulled into the long and winding dirt road leading to the cabin. The entryway was shrouded in tall trees and for a moment, I thought I saw someone watching me from just behind the tree line, but I looked back and there was no one there. I told myself I must be imagining it. I'd just seen one of those shifting shadows from the setting sun among the heavy foliage. When I had first entered the address into my navigation app, I was disappointed to see the address was a campground. The host had apparently cropped out the image on the listing to make it look like a lone cabin. I wasn't all that surprised though. The place was ridiculously cheap and one of the few rentals in the area that were available at the time. After the figure I thought I'd seen on the drive up, plus the way the trees nearly choked out what was left of the sun, I wasn't upset at the idea of not being totally alone. I double-checked the instructions I'd printed to find the combination to the lockbox and also some notes which were a bit odd. They read as follows. You may not check out early. Pool open to guests. There are great hiking trails in the woods. Please take your trash before you leave. The pool is open to guests. From the middle of the camp, there was an ancient looking paved trail, cracked and uneven, that wound around the perimeter through the dense trees. The area itself was beautiful, but as I walked along, I passed cabin after cabin in varying states of disrepair. Some had warped wood and caved in roofs, others had missing doors and rotted steps. One was nothing but the remains of a foundation. There had been other cars in the parking lot, but it was eerily quiet. There wasn't another guest in sight. The absence of any living person was a presence in and of itself that loomed over the place. It didn't seem peaceful at all. It was unnerving. I wondered if I had stumbled upon some old listing somehow, though they had certainly accepted my reservation and my money. I was about to turn back when I spotted, in the distance, the cabin from the pictures. It looked very well cared for, unlike the others. I saw movement from the corner of my eye and jumped, already on edge. After a moment, I realized what it was. The remnants of a torn curtain fluttering along in the breeze to the busted out window of the cabin next door. All of the other cabins looked to be vacant the darkness within apparent through the blank and shattered windows. I felt an awful creeping apprehension and I strongly debated just leaving, but it was almost dark and I didn't feel comfortable driving through the dark woods at night, especially with nowhere else to stay. I figured I'd head home in the morning. A bit further from the cabin, I could see an old pool that I doubt had seen a swimmer in decades, worn out children's toys. Shoes, trash, and other debris from the campsite littered the bottom of the deep end, sun bleached and long forgotten. A wide and streaky rust color painted one of the walls and bottom of the cracking plaster, ending at the pile of abandoned items. I thought back to the pool open to guests note from the host. I guess they must have some weird sense of humor. Other than the screech of rusted hinges when I opened the door, the cabin was in good condition although the decor looked to have last been updated in at least the 1970s. While looking around for a bit, I found a few dust-covered items that looked to have been accidentally left behind by previous guests. I made sure to make a mental note to let the host know. I sat inside for a while, looking out at the grounds and woods around me. For a moment, out of the corner of my eye, I thought that I saw the pool filled with dark water multiple pale and thin figures standing in it up to their shoulders. But when I turned to look, it was empty. Just like it had always been. I assured myself I was just imagining things. The solitude was even more apparent after the sun had fully set. Far removed from the lights of the nearest town and with the moon drowning out the clouds, 
The campsite was blanketed in a level of darkness unlike anything I had ever experienced before. That, coupled with the silence, made me feel completely alone in the world. The only sounds I would occasionally hear were the wind through the leaves and the occasional soft slosh of moving water. I decided to call a friend just to hear another human's voice, but I had no reception on my phone and the old rotary phone in the kitchen didn't work. I didn't even get a dial tone. Already regretting my decision to stay, I turned in early, hoping the night would pass quickly. I wondered if they'd give me a refund on the other two nights, but based on the note about not checking out early, I figured probably not. I had almost fallen asleep when I heard it. The tap, 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 and scraping against the window. It didn't concern me at first. I assumed the wind had picked up and I was hearing one of the many trees surrounding the cabin. But then, I heard the protest of the metal hinges on the front door. I bolted upright. I must have forgotten to lock it behind me. The old wooden floorboards of the kitchen creaked under the weight of whomever had come inside. I locked the bedroom door and grabbed my phone, only to remember I had no service. Unsure of what else to do, I pushed the only other piece of furniture in the room in front of the door and wedged myself under the bed. Their steps sounded wet and made an awful squelching sound on the carpet in the hallway. The sound of their footsteps became louder and closer. The intruder paused. A door opened further down the hall, one of the other bedrooms. Another set of footsteps continued on even after the first had paused. There was more than one of them. Methodically, slowly, I hear someone enter each room, walk around it, and leave. They were working their way down the hall, closer and closer to the room that I was in. I really thought I was experiencing what were to be my final moments on this earth. Tap, tap, tap. That time, it came from my bedroom door, and in the closer proximity, I could hear the scrapes of long nails on the rough wood. They turned the handle and I held my breath, hoping the flimsy looking lock would hold. When it didn't open, they alternated between tapping on the door and slamming against it. I heard the slow and deliberate steps of one of them leaving and not long after, the tapping on the window resumed. Sometimes I'd hear the painfully shrill sound of something sharp being dragged along the glass. I spent every moment of that night wide awake, with my heart pounding in time with the taps at the door and windows. It was nearly dawn when I heard the last pair of footsteps fade into the distance. The front door opened and closed for the last time. I waited another couple of hours for the sun to be high above the horizon before I felt brave enough to open the bedroom door. I somewhat expected someone to be out there, quietly and patiently waiting for me but there was nothing to indicate there had ever been anyone out there at all, except the dried muddy footprints all over the wood floors and the still damp carpet. I gathered my things as fast as I could. Outside, I could see where the prints continued. They circled my car multiple times and made trips to and from the bedroom window. I saw that they originated from and ended at the long dry pool, into which they disappeared. I noticed something else odd about the prints. They were misshapen. They looked to be made by bare feet, but the proportions were off. The image they suggested resembled no feet I had ever seen before. I loaded everything back into my car as fast as I could. I didn't even look back in my rearview mirror. As soon as I felt safe and had a reception, I went to message the host, both to ask for a refund and to let them know what happened. They never responded to me. I decided to contact the company, but I noticed the listing had been removed. Not long after though, it was back up again. I filed a complaint, but it took a month or so for it to get taken down. I'm still not sure if it'll show back up again. I wanted to share my experience to encourage people to make better decisions than I did. If things don't feel right, Please don't ignore the red flags. And if you see this listing, do not book it.